Hey guys, welcome back to Coding Shoding with NJ. Today we are going to learn how can we replace our front end with Postman in our website development. So as you all know, all the business logic is defined at the back end and our front end is just a way for the clients to interact with the back end, send requests to the back end and get responses back from the back end. So while we are developing a website, our main focus is to getting the business logic of the backend right to make sure that the backend is doing what it is supposed to do. But we cannot know for certain if our backend logic is working properly or not unless we have front end through which we send requests and get the responses that we expect to get from backend for that particular request. So that means even though we don't immediately need front end, and our sole focus is on the back end, but we cannot be certain without front end. This is where a postman comes in handy. It relieves you of developing front end or waiting for front end to be developed in order to see if your back end is working properly or not. You can replace your front end with the postman during the development phase. Obviously, you are going to need front end eventually. And this postman shines really well when the back end is sending just the data. That means the back end is actually behaving as an API. And that in turn means that each HTTP request only gets data in the response. No presentation logic, no HTML pages. So this is what the postman does. But the problem is that if we are beginner level web developers, this using Postman instead of front end actually confuses us. We cannot relate how does a Postman is doing the job of our front end. So today I'll try to clear this confusion and I'll show you how does the Postman do the job of front end for our website. In order to do that, I'm going to give you a demo of my website for which I have created both front end and back end. First, I will access the back end using the front end and then I'll show you how can I use the same service through the postman. So let's get started. Okay, so this is the front end of a login system which is offering different services and I'm only going to use this login service. So when I click on this login button, I'm redirected to a new page where I'll provide this username and password and then click on this login button and then this request, this HTTP request goes to the backend and backend verifies it against the database. If it has a user with provided credentials, I will be welcomed back. Otherwise, I will get appropriate message that I'm not a registered user. So let me try to log in. It says welcome triple Q which is the username and if you notice over here there is no query string attached to this URL that means this data this username and password has been sent as a payload of HTTP request to the server. So that means this actually is a post request which has been made to the server and I have got the response back. Now I'll try to log in but this time using postman rather than this front end. So I need to know where is my backend running. So if you notice over here, my backend is running on localhost with the port 8080. So I need to send a HTTP request to this address with username and password through Postman. Okay, so this is Postman. Currently it doesn't have anything. So that's why the scratch page is empty. So let me click on this plus and now this window appears. This window is basically divided into two parts. The top part represents the HTTP request that we want to send to the server and all the details related to that HTTP request needs to be provided over here. And once we have provided all these details, we can hit the send button and then we'll get the response back in, in this window. Okay, so the default HTTP request is always a get request. But if, we click, if I click over here, you can see different HTTP requests that I can send to the server. So as we just discussed, because I'm sending data in the body of the HTTP request, so I have to choose post request. And over here, I have to provide the URL where my backend is running, which was localhost colon 8080. 
uh, and the name of the file was model.php. So this is the URL where my backend is running. Now I have chosen the, the type of HTTP request and I have also provided the URL where the backend is running. All I need to do is I need to provide this, this data which needs to go along with the request to the client. So if you see over here, you see different options. If you want to send the data attached to your URL as a query string, then you will choose this, this params tab. So whatever I write here, so this key is going to represent the name of the variable and the value is going to be provided over here. So this description part is optional. So whatever right here is going to be attached as a query string to the URL over here. Let me show you anything, anything. So this is, this has been attached as a query string to the URL. But since I don't want to send username and password attached to my URL, so we don't need this parameters part. What I'm interested in in the body section because I'm sending the farm data as a, as a payload for the HTTP request. Now, since this username and password is taken from the user in the form of a HTML form. So that means I have to select this one XWWW form URL encoded because my data is ASCII based. If it's some binary value, some, some videos or files, then I would have chosen this form data. Okay. The first one was username and the variable that I have used in the front end is username and its value is triple Q. And for the password, the variable I have used is PWD and the value is also triple Q. Now you can see I have used these two key value pairs, but nothing has been attached to the URL because I have chosen post method and I have provided this as a body. Now the way this website is designed, it actually requires a third piece of information as well which is a hidden value so user doesn't see it and user doesn't provide it when you are trying to log in through the front end. But because Postman is doing the job of the front end, so we need to provide that hidden value as well. So the hidden value in this case is called CRUD request and its value is login. Okay. So these are all the details that we needed for making this request to the server. We don't need anything else. This is header section and if you can see 9 over here, that means there are 9 headers which are going by default along with this request to the server. I haven't provided these headers. These are default headers. And if I needed an authorization, I could have chosen the type of authorization that I need. So I don't need any authorization so I can select no auth if I needed any other authorization. So relevant to the type of authorization, I would get some more fields to fill data in. But since I don't need any authorization, so I don't need to do anything over here. This pre-request script is not of our interest at this time. Neither is the test and we don't need to change default settings either at this time. So I think we are all set and let me hit this send and see what happens. Sending request. It says welcome triple Q. Exactly the same message that I got when I logged in through the front end. Now let's try to put some random values and see what message I get. It says invalid username or password. And let's try to do the same with postman. So some random values over here and some random data over here and send. It says invalid username and password. Okay. So here you can see the status of the HTTP request. So this is the status that I got. And this time means it took 15 milliseconds to get the response. And the size of the response is 629 bytes. So this is pretty much the crux of the postman. So if you need another request, you can click on this plus button and you can make another request over here. So let's try to make a get request with the same backend. This time get and this URL with get request. I'm not providing any values 
and let's see what I get. It says welcome to restful login system. So now I'm making two requests to the same backend. If I need to make third request with a different method or different data, I can create another window as well. Now since we have multiple requests for the same website or same backend and if you want to save it for later use so that next time when we try to test our backend or test our API we don't need to provide we don't need to fill in all the data that we have provided over here so for that we need to save it in some project and the project here is called collections so a collection is basically a project in which different HTTP requests that you have defined goes in. So what I can do, I can save it in a collection. So I can give any name to the request. So I'm going to call it login request. I can provide description which is optional. Since I haven't got any collection at the moment, so let me create a collection first by clicking on this create collection and I'm going to call it restful login press on this check mark so now this collection has been created let me click on this and save to restful login now you can see we have a collection with the name restful login and I have only one request over here which is called a login request and since the type of parameter that I have used for the HTTP request is post so you can see the post over here as well so now let me save this second request to the same collection as well so this is welcome request let me select this collection now you can see we have two requests in the RESTful login collection and let me close these windows. So next time if I want to test the same backend, I just click on this collection, choose the particular collection I'm interested in and click on this particular request that I'm interested in. If I go to the body, you can see all the details are already filled in. So I don't need to provide the data for this request. Even if I had chosen some authorization details or added other headers or I had set any other different settings, they would all have been here and I would not have needed to provide those details again. All I need to do is hit the send button and get the response back. So this is pretty much whole idea behind this postman and I hope you are not intimidated by postman anymore. Obviously there are lots more options over here which you are going to get familiarized with the passage of time. This was just a beginner level, very basic tutorial to get you started with the postman. I hope you liked it. Thank you so much.